We have seen many unfortunate events unfold throughout the year of 2017. From terrorist attacks to relentless murders and even hurricanes, it seems that death, chaos, and misery have littered the calendar. And indeed, these occurrences have left many alone, confounded, and permanently heartbroken. Today, we recount some of the worst events of 2017. However, we have decided to pass over some of the more obvious stories and instead try our best to cover events you may not have known happened but were horrible all the same. So let's begin. The day of October 18th, 2017 started out normally for 32-year-old Kenneth White in the Vienna Township of Michigan. Yet sadly, his drive back home later that day would forever change the lives of his loved ones. After a long day of working at a construction site, White was driving home to his family on Interstate 71. But then the unexpected transpired. A six-pound rock fell from an overpass above, broke through his windshield, fractured his skull, and ricocheted into his chest. White soon thereafter died of blunt force trauma. The police soon shut down this part of I-71 so that they could investigate. Five teenagers were responsible for throwing the rock, a dangerous prank that brought an abrupt end to the life of a loving husband and father. They were subsequently apprehended by authorities, and each teenager was given one count of second-degree murder and one count of conspiracy to commit second-degree murder. In addition, the five teenagers were also responsible for throwing other rocks over the overpass, including a 20-pound stone. Other drivers later came forward and reported hearing rocks hit their vehicles. A total of 20 rocks were found on the roads below. All five teenagers could face life imprisonment for their crimes. Even so, nothing will change for a family whose husband and father can never be brought back to life all thanks to the senseless actions of individuals who completely disregarded the value of human life. For many, Easter is supposed to be a day of renewal, unity, and redemption. However, this was not the case for one man who live-streamed himself on Facebook doing the unthinkable. On April 16th, 2017, a man by the name of Steve Stevens began a live stream on Facebook. In the live stream, Stevens said he was going to kill an old man walking down the street. Regrettably, he did exactly as he said. After approaching 74-year-old Robert Goodwin, Stevens shot the man without an inch of mercy. Stevens went on to say that he was upset at his girlfriend and claimed to have killed 13 other people, although Goodwin was his only known victim. Cleveland police soon commenced a manhunt for Stevens, which lasted two days. On April 18th, an employee at a McDonald's in Erie, Pennsylvania recognized Stevens. They hurriedly told Stevens that he would have to wait a minute on his fries. This was so the police would have time to arrive. However, Stevens seemed suspicious and left. State troopers soon pursued him and performed the pursuit intervention technique to bring Stevens' vehicle to a halt. As his car was spinning out of control, he quickly drew his gun and committed suicide by shooting himself in the head. The true motivations of Steve Stevens may never be fully understood, but what is certain is that ultimately, the innocent life of a husband, father, and grandfather was senselessly lost. Churchgoers tend to attend church for reasons of faith and fellowship, but church is also seen as a sanctuary. Nevertheless, sometimes this isn't the case. One Sunday, September 24, 2017, a congregation in Antioch, Tennessee, would find out precisely how violent their day would become at church. 25-year-old Emmanuel Sampson neared the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ with a firearm and shortly thereafter opened fire. Sampson killed one woman, 
64-year-old Catherine Dickerson, and injured seven other members. An usher, 22-year-old Robert Engel, was shot in the hand when he confronted the gunman. Engel quickly ran to his vehicle to retrieve a pistol and thereafter fought with Sampson. In the process, Sampson accidentally shot himself and sustained a minor injury. As a result, Sampson had to be taken to the hospital, but was discharged after a brief period of time. A note found in Sampson's vehicle indicated that the reason for his crime may have been to take revenge for the victims of white supremacist Dylan Roof's horrific shooting. As a result, the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division and the FBI opened a hate crime investigation into the attack. Investigators have yet to confirm whether or not this was the reason. In the aftermath, the congregation has become stronger than before, and one of the critically injured victims, Pastor David Spann, has returned to Burnett Chapel. Halloween certainly became a horrific day for 19 unsuspecting victims in New York City. Amidst the streets, panic and screams would ensue. It was 2.06 p.m. on October 31, 2017, in New Jersey. A man, 29-year-old Saifulo Saipov, rented a truck from Home Depot. At 2.43, Saipov crossed the George Washington Bridge and entered Manhattan. He then drove down the West Side Highway, making his way to the Hudson River Greenway, a bikeway for cyclists. Saipov then proceeded to run over all of the cyclists in his way, killing eight and injuring seven others. He soon thereafter crashed into a school bus transporting special needs students, injuring four. As Saipov climbed out from the truck, he shouted Allahu Akbar and quickly fled the scene. He was then shot in the abdomen by a New York City police officer, taken into custody and transported to Bellevue Hospital. In the vehicle that Saipov rented, an ISIS flag was found as well as a document that signified his commitment to a terrorist organization. In the end, the FBI charged Saipov with destruction of a motor vehicle and providing material support for a terrorist organization. Saipov was very clearly happy to have done what he did, and requested that the ISIS flag be hung in his hospital room. This past year, the Western Hemisphere was witness to great, terrifying power. A monstrous tempest without even an inch of mercy. It became one of the strongest hurricanes ever observed in the Atlantic Ocean. On August 30th, 2017, Hurricane Irma began to form near the Cape Verde Islands after a tropical wave had moved off the West African coast three days before. Under the perfect conditions, Irma began to intensify swiftly, becoming a Category 2 hurricane on the Saffir-Simpson scale, only within a brief period of 24 hours. And soon thereafter, Irma became a Category 3, which is considered a major hurricane. However, due to eyewall replacement cycles, the intensity of Irma altered between Categories 2 and 3 for the next several days. Then, on September 4th, Irma's intensity began increasing once again. The hurricane soon became a Category 5 the preceding day. On September 6th, Irma reached the climax of its intensity, with 185 mile per hour winds and tremendous pressure, which made it the second most intense tropical cyclone worldwide in 2017. Irma weakened back to a Category 4 due to another eyewall replacement cycle. Nevertheless, Hurricane Irma reached another Category 5 status for the second time. After making landfall over Cuba, it dropped back down to a Category 3. Even so, its destruction over Cuba was unprecedented. Irma then strengthened back to a Category 4 once it began to cross the ocean to Florida before making landfall on Kajo Key. Irma dropped back to a Category 3 once it made a second Florida landfall on Marco Island. Later that day, it weakened to a Category 2 storm, the first time Irma had weakened below major hurricane status in over a week. It eventually dissolved off the coast of New England. Irma resulted in $66.8 billion worth of damage. However, 
Hurricane Irma also caused the deaths of at least 134 people. In January of 2017, months before the Easter Day livestream shooting, there was another livestream on Facebook that left the internet in shock. It all began December 31st, 2016. A mentally disabled 18-year-old was dropped off at a McDonald's by his parents in Streamwood, Illinois. The 18-year-old was then picked up in a van by a supposed friend. Both had attended the same school in Aurora, Illinois. However, the 18-year-old would soon find out that the person whom he thought was his friend was in actuality the complete opposite. On January 2nd of 2017, the 18-year-old's parents filed a missing persons report. On January 3rd, the friend and the 18-year-old went to the residence of his two sisters, then joined by another friend of theirs. One of the sisters started a Facebook live stream and proceeded to record various acts of cruelty. As the live stream continued, the 18-year-old was bound, gagged, taunted, tortured, had part of his scalp cut off, was forced to kiss the floor and forced to drink toilet water. During the live stream, the attackers could be heard saying, fuck Trump and fuck white people. In addition, one of the attackers also contacted the victim's mother and demanded a $300 ransom for his return. The live stream only lasted 28 minutes, but the victim was tied up for hours and endured a great amount of suffering. Police suspect the attack on the 18-year-old ended when neighbors in the apartment below complained about loud noises. The four suspects, all African American, were arrested and charged with aggravated kidnapping, aggravated unlawful restraint, aggravated battery, and a hate crime. They were later identified as 18-year-old Jordan Hill, 18-year-old Tesfaye Cooper, 18-year-old Brittany Covington, and 24-year-old Tanisha Covington. In December of 2017, Brittany Covington pled guilty to the charges of committing a hate crime, intimidation, and aggravated battery. Additional charges such as kidnapping were dropped as part of her plea deal. She was then sentenced to four years of probation and 200 hours of community service. In the recent years, rooftopping has become a popular trend among those who greatly desire attention, adrenaline rushes, and viral internet fame. However, and conspicuously, with the practice come many dangers. One stuntman in particular would regrettably find out just how dangerous the rooftopping was. Wu Yunging, a 26-year-old Chinese daredevil, established an incredibly large following by recording himself climbing skyscrapers with no safety gear and taking selfies from extremely high points on the buildings. One day, Yun Ging would enter a contest so that he could win a prize worth the equivalent of 15,000 American dollars. He intended on using the prize money to pay for his wedding, as well as get treatment for his ill mother. But regrettably, Yoon Ging would not only lose the contest, but his life. On November 8th, once at the top of a 62-story building, Yoon Ging began to suspend himself from the edge of the tall structure by using only his hands. Eventually, he began to perform chin-ups, but without warning, he started to struggle and then accidentally let go, falling to his death and rendering the world speechless. The event was caught on camera and rapidly became a sensation on the internet. Perhaps the tragic footage of Yoon Ging will serve as a grim reminder of the dangers to any other daredevil who wishes to perform the same feat in the future. One of the worst terrorist attacks in all of 2017, an entire nation was left devastated. On October 14, 2017, a man in a truck loaded with several hundred kilograms of homemade and military-grade explosives was stopped by police in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia. In an instant, the driver accelerated his vehicle, crashing through a barrier, then detonating the explosives. Many of the witnesses described confused and terrified families wandering amidst the debris, smoke, and destruction that shortly thereafter followed. 
There were over 500 casualties, at least 300 of which were deaths. The man who caused the massive explosion was linked to Al-Shabaab, a well-known Islamist group in Somalia that has been linked to Al-Qaeda since 2011. President Muhammad Abduhali Muhammad announced three days of mourning after the attack and even joined thousands of people who donated blood to hospitals. We can only hope that one day terrorist attacks like these will end, but unfortunately, recent trends seem to predict otherwise. Sunday, November 5th, 2017, Sutherland Springs, Texas. It was a normal day at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. However, their 11 a.m. service would prove fatal when the unexpected transpired. A man wearing all black with a ballistic military vest and armed with a military-style rifle parked his vehicle across the street and began to approach the church. As he stepped upon the pavement of the parking lot, he began to unrelentingly open fire. Then, after walking to the right side of the church, he entered the building and continued firing. The congregation crawled below the pews, holding on to their children and Bibles. Some of the kids started crying, and the parents desperately told them to hush, but sadly the children's fear persisted. The shooter began to fire at the parishioners remorselessly, including the sobbing children. Within seconds, many were either dead or critically wounded. When the man exited the church, he was shot by a neighbor who had heard the sounds of gunfire. Quickly, the shooter fled to his vehicle and took off. Several of the neighbors chased his vehicle into the neighboring county before his car crashed, possibly killing him in the process. He was found dead in his vehicle. It's believed the crash and subsequent death were thanks in large part to the neighbor shooting the attacker. At the church, a scene of utter carnage was left behind. 23 people were found dead inside the church, while two were found dead outside. One more died later at the hospital. The shooter was identified as 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly, who already had a history of violence and was even court-martialed and dishonorably discharged from the military. His motivations still remain unclear to this day. Mexico is one of the most seismically active regions in the world, sitting on top of many active tectonic plates. In addition, there is also seismic activity along the edges of the Rivera and Caribbean plates. Altogether, this causes roughly 40 earthquakes per day in Mexico. But nothing could have prepared the citizens of Mexico for the earthquake that took place on September 19, 2017. The earthquake's estimated magnitude was 7.1, killing 370 people and injuring more than 6,000. There was violent shaking for more than 20 seconds, and the destruction that followed was exceedingly vast. Strangely, this earthquake took place on the anniversary of the 1985 Mexico City earthquake. At least 44 buildings in Mexico City collapsed, causing fires and large clouds of dust. Gas pipelines also leaked as a result. Church steeples crumbled and some churches even fully collapsed, one of which collapsed during a mass, killing 15 people. And another church collapsed during a baptism, killing 11 people, including the baby. In the aftermath, the international response was overwhelming. Some of the response included the Japan International Cooperation Agency sending a disaster relief team of 72 search and rescue personnel, four search dogs, and five tons of equipment, as well as other rescuers, including police from Tokyo. The Israeli Defense Forces sent a group of 71 search and rescue soldiers, including engineers. The Turkish State Aid Agency also sent humanitarian aid. That's all for this episode. Please be sure to press on screen now to watch another video of mine, and if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe to my channel because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.